Hey guys, I'm Alina and today we are going to learn class 8 NCRT Science Chapter 1 Crop Production and Management. So first, let's know what is agriculture. So agriculture is a branch of science which deals with the growth of plants and animals both. So not only plants but also animals for human use. So here the key points are it is a branch of science. It is the growth of plants and animals. Do not forget about animals also. And it is done for human use. So agriculture the product which comes out is used by the humans. So uh, agriculture is the branch of science in which uh, plants and animals are grown for human use. Next one is sustainable agriculture. So in class 8 geography first chapter resources we have learned about sustainable development. So this is sustainable agriculture pretty similar. In this we increase the production of agriculture without causing harm to the environment. So in order to provide food for a large population we need to maintain regular production of food and proper management and distribution. So when we are practicing agriculture and when we are growing the crops etc we need to maintain the production and have a proper management and also make sure it's well distributed. So now we learn about crop types. So we have two crop types here Kharif crop and Rabi crop. So the NCRT says that these are crop patterns but that is given wrong. Crop pattern is something else which we will learn in this video. But first let's learn about crop types. So crop type is Rabi and Kharif crops. So these are uh, crops grown in different seasons in India. So first one we have is Kharif crop. So Kharif crop is grown in the rainy season which is from June to September between this period Kharif crops are go grown and they are harvested during October time and some examples of this is paddy and maize also soya bean is a Kharif crop. The next one is Rabi crop. So Rabi crop is grown in the winter season which is from October to March and it is harvested between March and April. An example is wheat, pea, also gram is a rabi crop. So the NCRB mentions only these two but there is one more which is zed crop. So the zed crop is grown in the dry season from April to June between this period and it is harvested between June and July. Some examples of these are musk melon, watermelon etc. even cucumber. So now we'll talk about the cropping pattern but before that I'll tell you what is a crop I forgot to tell you. So a crop is basically the same kind of plant which is grown on a large scale at the same place. So that's a crop and cropping pattern which was given wrong in the NCRT. So cropping pattern is the way we are planting the plants different methods. So we have three and the first and easy one is transplantation. So in transplantation first you grow the seeds in nurseries in small pots etc and when it grows into a small plant which is a sapling or a seedling then it is shifted from the nursery to the field and there it is placed and then further grown. So it helps in choosing the best ones if there is any unwanted or if there is any unhealthy plant then you can discard it and choose the healthy ones so that's an advantage of transplantation the second one is mixed cropping and then it is intercropping so first i'll explain you about intercropping so what we do in intercropping is first in the field we make rows and in each row we grow separate plants. Suppose we take two. So in first row plant A, 
in second row plant b so in rows we are planting different plants so the next which is mixed cropping in this what we do this is also growing two or more plants together but in this we take the seeds of the different plants mix it up and then just scatter it away so it can be like one uh, one plant with another like wheat and mustard you can say so like one wheat with another mustard or it can be wheat with wheat so that's how we do mixed cropping in mixed cropping we just uh, mix the seeds and then scatter but in intercropping we grow two plants but in separate rows the next topic is agricultural practices so agricultural practices are the activities or the methods carried out by a gardener a farmer or even you when you are growing crops so first step we need to do when we are growing a crop is preparing the soil so in this we prepare the soil in such a way that it is the it is in the best form to uh, grow the crop so we learn in detail about all these but i am just giving you a gist right now the next one is sowing that is sowing the seeds in the soil adding manure so giving adding manure or even fertilizers so giving extra nutrients to the soil or even the nutrients which the soil lacks in then irrigation irrigation is the method of giving water to the plants then we have protection from weeds so weeds are the unwanted plants which sometimes grow in the crop grow between the crops so we need to remove them because it is important to remove them else there will be a there will be a competition for nutrients and they may cause harm to the crop then we have harvesting so once we have grown the crop we have sown the seed it is grown into a plant then we need to harvest them then after harvesting we need to store them properly so that it doesn't get ruined or damaged so the first step in agricultural practices is preparation of soil so in this process we prepare the soil in such a way that the seeds can be sowed properly so in this process we break down the crumbs turn the soil and prepare it fully so the advantage from this process is that the roots can penetrate deep into the soil as the crumbs are broken down it becomes easy for this uh, roots to penetrate then roots can also breathe easily that is because air is trapped inside the soil and when we turn it and break it down the air is released and hence it helps the roots to breathe easily it also helps in the growth of microbes and microbes add a humus to the soil that's why they are also known as the farmer's friend and uh, when we turn the soil so the nutrient rich soil which was sometimes goes underneath it comes to the above and then the plants can use it so this is how we prepare the soil and this process is known as tilling so tilling is the process of loosening and turning of soil so this is all is this all is the preparation and this process is known as tilling so after the process of tilling we do leveling in this we level the soil for preventing soil from being blown away by the wind preventing soil erosion and water logging it also increases the water holding capacity of the soil and it helps in uniform irrigation about irrigation we will be learning later in this video so now let's take a look at the agricultural implements so these are tools which are used in the process of agriculture while sowing irrigation plowing etc so first one is a plow so plow is used for the process of tilling it is also known as plowing so it is driven by a pair of bulls and this is how a plow looks like and the long rod is known as the plow shaft which is made up of wood and the triangular iron strip is the plow share the next one is a hoe it is used for removing weeds and also loosening the soil that is in the process of tilling or plowing and this is how the hoe looks like 
there is also one more which is the cultivator a cultivator nowadays is driven by a tractor and this is how the cultivator looks like it saves time and labor so the next step in agricultural practices is sowing so sowing is the process by which we sow the seeds in the soil so these points are the, are to be kept in mind when we are sowing the seeds first one is to discard the damaged seeds now how do we know which are the healthy seeds and which are the unhealthy seeds so for that first we take the seeds in a bowl and add some water to it we wait for a while and then the seeds which will float on the water are the discarded seeds we should add the damaged seed and we should discard them that is because they are damaged and become hollow and hence they float then we should grow uh, we should sow them at proper depth and distance the soil should be wet this is because in wet soil germination takes place so hence the soil should be wet and the seed should be covered with soil after sowing so these are the points we should uh, keep in mind while sowing now we talk about the different methods of sowing seeds the ncert talks about bro broadly about these two methods which is traditional method and the modern one seed drill there is also one more which is transplantation so first let's talk about the traditional method so in this traditional method there is a tool which is shaped uh, like a funnel and in that funnel seeds are poured it has long pipes passing through it uh, which has sharp ends so these seeds they are put in the funnel and through the pipe they are pierced in the soil and this is run by bulls and uh, bulls and cows etc and uh, labor is also required this is a traditional method so this is not much efficient but we have a modern method also and the traditional method this is how it looks in the modern method we use seed drill it is run by tractor and it sows the seed at equal uh, distance and depth and also it covers the soil after the seed is sowed so this ensures that the seed is not eaten by the birds and um, ensures proper depth and etc the next method is transplantation so in transplantation first the seeds are grown in nurseries in small pots when the seed turns into a seedling or a small sapling a small plant then it is shifted from the nursery to the field so this helps us in choosing the best plants if suppose some plants do not grow up well so we can exclude them so this is also one advantage of transplantation the next step after sowing is adding manures and fertilizers so this step is done to add the nutrients in the soil which they lack in or which they require more so in this manuring manuring is adding of manure to the fields to replenish the soil with nutrients so fertilizers are the chemical fertilizers chemicals added to the soil so manure is made by the uh, decomposition of plants animals and it organic matter you can say uh, organic matter when they decompose they form manure and fertilizers are chemicals so some example of these are urea ammonium sulfate npk npk stands for nitrogen phosphorus p stands for phosphorus and k is for potassium so nitrogen phosphorus potassium is a fertilizer including uh, also urea ammonium sulfate are also some fertilizers now let's know what is the difference between a fertilizer and manure so fertilizer as i told you are made up of chemicals or we can say these are man made in organic soil so these are made by man and they are not organic whereas manure is made from natural substances it is made by the uh, it is obtained by the decomposition of natural substances uh, such as the trees shrubs and organic matter then 
these fertilizers are prepared in the factories whereas these manure are prepared from natural substances so these are prepared in the fields fertilizers they do not provide humus to the soil well manure it is an organic matter hence it provides a lot of humus to the soil the fertilizer is rich in nutrients like nitrogen potassium and phosphorus n2 stands for nitrogen k for potassium and phosphorus but manure is less rich in uh, plant nutrients it is rich in humus but less rich in plant nutrients now let's know about the advantages of manure over fertilizers that means how manure is better than fertilizers in some way so manure it enhances the water holding capacity of the soil it also makes the soil porous which helps in exchange of gases it makes it easy and it increases the number of friendly microbes that is it also has humus so that is it is increasing the number of friendly microbes also it improves the texture of the soil like i told you how manures are better than fertilizers like that in some cases fertilizers are also better than manure so firstly fertilizers are nutrient specific so that means that few fertilizers are rich in that particular nutrient for example like i told you earlier some are uh, rich in nitrogen potassium and phosphorus while manure are not like that so that is one advantage of fertilizer the another one is that fertilizers are soluble in water so they can be rapidly absorbed by the uh, soil whereas manure are mainly some semi solid form so they cannot be uh, absorbed that rapidly as fertilizers there are some disadvantages of fertilizers if we overuse it it may degrade the quality of the soil if overused also it may cause soil and water pollution so that was all for today's video hope you enjoyed there will be a part 2 coming soon which will cover the rest of the chapter so stay tuned and don't forget to hit the like button share this video and subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell so that you get notified every time i upload a video also check the description box for free worksheet with answer keys bye bye